Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, I haven't put up a video in a while on the channel, nor has Weston or Matt or any of the guys. So anyway, I figured I'd do a little video here to um, catch all the subscribers up to what's going on here in the shop or the garage. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna call this video a few problems that I have with the SR20 DET. So this engine is in my 240SX, as most of you already know, and I've had it for about a year now. So I've, I've learned it a bit. Um, lately I've taken it apart and I've run into some problems. So let me grab the camera here and show you what some of the problems I've had are. I'll try not to let this video run any longer than it needs to. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right in here. My first major issue with the engine is one of the reasons that I had to pull it out. You'll notice here these journals for the cams. This is where the cams ride. Um, you see some scorch marks on some of these, the black areas. They ought to look more like this anytime you take the valve cover off and cams out. Um, it still has some scorch marks on it. What you don't want them to look like is this. You can see there, see how gritty that is? You can hear the. How, how bad it is, it's all ground off. That is because this engine did not get enough oil up here at the top. This sits on top of the block. I don't have a block here in the garage with me, but anyway, it does not get enough oil up there. And then what ends up happening is your camshafts ride on those journals and they just get destroyed. So what would I do about that? I'm just a student for mechanical engineering. I haven't actually done, uh, I've never built an engine by any means, but Looking back on some of the technology that Nissan had available to them, based on things like the crankshaft and whatnot, they used bearings for the crankshaft. A lot of people get rod knock or spun bearings. That's, that's the bearings they're talking about. I feel like if Nissan had implemented that type of system on this camshaft area, they really might have saved the energy of having to go out and find a new cylinder head because as it is at the moment, this is junked. I need to go buy a new one. Now that really sucks because that means I have to find one and I also have to find one that's in good enough condition to rebuild. I'm no expert, but in my opinion, I think it wouldn't have been impossible to just add a little sliver of a bearing in here to uh, save the journals. That way, if in the occasion that the engine didn't get enough oil up top there, you wouldn't end up having to replace the whole cylinder head, which is literally this entire chunk of metal for those of you that don't know, like all of this is the cylinder head. You would only have to replace those bearings like you do on the crankshaft. Another reason I took this engine apart was because I blew up one of the pistons. I didn't know that I blew up one of the pistons until I took the engine apart. I heard a ticking noise while I was driving in the past. Um, I'm, pr I'm probably... Probably mentioned that in an earlier video. But um, yeah, I heard a ticking sound and then one day when I was driving on the freeway it just turned into a banging. It was like tick, 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 and then all of a sudden just... Um, there was a lot more smoke coming out of the engine, or the exhaust, and yeah, it was just messed up. So here's what the piston looks like. Notice the three good pistons here. These are as good as they get. They're still awfully scorched. Boom. That piston is destroyed. You see that? It's just junked. It's garbage. That's part of the piston ring down here. It cracked off while it was running. Luckily, I didn't damage the cylinder walls too much. I'm getting them bored out, remachined to save from whatever damage it caused. But uh, yeah, this piston is finished. All right, <clears throat> I have this piston here. Now these are the bearings I'm talking about. They're probably difficult to see. You see that little sliver of silver inside the circle here. Those are two little slips of metal. There's one on top and bottom. And those are the bearings that come on the, uh, the crankshaft for the connecting rods to the pistons. Now these are forged, these are not forged, I'm sorry. These are cast aluminum pistons or cast steel or some crap that Nissan makes from the factory. They're not terrible, I can't lie. I did beat the engine pretty hard. Um, and I'm not even really sure that I'm the one who caused all this damage. Uh, but as you've seen in the previous videos, I did drive it really aggressively. Who's to say, whatever. The fact is that I've got a busted engine at the moment and I'm the one who gets to fix it. I get to learn a lot from this. Um, you know, blood, sweat, tears, that kind of thing. But I'm a student, I learn, it's what I do right now, so it's an, it's an experience. I don't really regret it. I wish I had more time and money, but when do you not want that, you know? Can't complain too much. One thing that I do have, though, is some really cool parents. 
can't lie, they're letting me keep my car here in the garage during the summer while I work on the engine. I'm very, very grateful for that. They didn't have to give me that opportunity. Um, so, mom and dad, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I've learned that organization during this type of process is extremely important. So I've got a couple of these plastic bins here where I've labeled them with uh, painter's tape. Anyway, some, uh, back to the list of things I'm disappointed with. These guys, these are the head studs, as they're called. These, these aren't even studs, they're bolts. Um, they go basically up here in a few spots, like in these areas, and they hold the um, cylinder head to the block. Now, they used an Allen key. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but that's what comes stock with the uh, SR20 DET. It's an Allen head. I'm not happy with that. I really hate those. I would prefer they would used a hex head. I think it would have been a lot easier to get off. I did end up breaking an adapter for my half inch breaker bar down there. I had to go back to Harbor Freight and replace this piece because it literally snapped. I don't have the original to show. Maybe I'll throw a picture of it in here. But yeah, I guess it couldn't handle the torque. I guess that's what I get for using uh, Chinese tools though, whatever. A friend of mine, JC, does a lot of work on Porsches and he's commented before that they actually use head studs that are designed to expand. The threads literally expand as they're torqued into place. It's not a matter of foot pounds of torque or whatever that you measure for when you're installing them. You literally check the gap between the threads, I think. That means that when you go to take them off, they're shot. They've already been stretched, you can't reuse them. I suppose if I needed to, I could reuse the, the studs or the bolts to hold the uh, cylinder head down to the block, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow everyone's advice. I'm gonna get ARP head studs. Just make sure that I do it right the first time. If I ever have to do this process again, hopefully that'll make it a lot easier. As far as um, porting and polishing goes though, I really can't knock Nissan for this one. They, they gave me a good starting platform. I've never done it before, but from the information I've learned, I'd say that this is a good place to start. The casting was done very effectively. Uh, there's not a lot of rough edges in there. So I think that it won't be impossible to do. Of course, it's gonna take some time to learn how to do it, but I mean, what doesn't? I just wanted to conclude this video um, by saying a few things. I was taught a while back that we only have so many things here on the planet, so you gotta work with what you have. The answer is not always to just throw away what you've got and replace it. Sometimes you gotta cowboy up and actually fix it. So I've been learning how to do that. I'm very grateful to have been able to acquire this car. Um, and have had the opportunity to work on it. I understand that not everybody does. I've tried to implement a couple of the old school techniques as well as some of the newer ones using all the fancy tools and things that I can get at the local parts store. Um, yeah, I guess we'll all have to find out how this goes together with time. Um, the goal is to get it done before school starts up in this next semester. Um, yeah, we'll see. Thanks for watching.